Have you ever looked up at the sky and seen a huge metal tube soaring thousands of feet above the ground? It's a common sight, but have you ever stopped to really think about it? Why doesn't that massive airplane, weighing hundreds of thousands of pounds, just give up and tumble back down to Earth? It seems to defy common sense, like throwing a giant rock into the air and expecting it to stay there. It's a machine made of heavy metal full of people and luggage, and yet it floats up there more gracefully than a feather. It's not magic, but it is a special kind of science. The answer isn't a single simple thing. It's a team effort between different forces. Think about a bird. A bird doesn't just flap its wings and hope for the best. It uses the shape of its wings and the power of its muscles to work with the air around it. An airplane does something very similar, but on a much, much bigger scale. Its wings are carefully designed to slice through the air in a very specific way. The engines provide the muscle, pushing the plane forward with incredible force. It's a delicate dance between shape, power, and the invisible ocean of air we live in. Imagine you are in a car moving very fast. If you stick your hand out the window, you can feel the air pushing against it. If you angle your hand slightly upwards, you can feel the air lift it. This simple feeling is the very beginning of understanding flight. Air is not empty. It is full of tiny particles. When millions of these particles hit a surface, they create pressure. An airplane's wing is a master at controlling this pressure. It creates a difference in pressure above and below the wing. And that difference is what creates the lift needed to climb into the sky. So, the next time you see a plane cruising overhead, don't just see a metal tube. See a brilliant piece of engineering that has mastered the air. It's not defying gravity. It's using other natural forces to overcome it. The plane stays up there because pilots and engineers understand the rules of the air. They know how to make the air work for them, turning it from an obstacle into a highway. It's a partnership between human ingenuity and the laws of physics, a partnership that allows us to travel the world from above. To truly understand how an airplane flies, we need to meet four special friends. These are the four forces of flight, lift, weight, thrust, and drag. Imagine a tug of war. For a plane to fly straight and level, these forces must be in balance. Weight is the force of gravity pulling the airplane down towards the center of the Earth. It's the easiest one to understand because we feel our own weight every day. Everything has weight, from a tiny paper airplane to the largest jumbo jet. This is the force that flight must overcome to get off the ground and stay in the air. The force that fights against weight is called lift. Lift is the upward force that pushes the airplane into the sky. It is created by the wings. As the plane moves forward, air flows over and under the curved wings. The wing is shaped to make the air on top travel faster than the air on the bottom. Faster air means lower pressure. So you have higher pressure under the wing pushing up and lower pressure on top. This difference in pressure creates a powerful upward push. It's like the air itself is lifting the wings and the entire plane along with them. Next, we have thrust. Thrust is the force that pushes the airplane forward. Without thrust, the wings couldn't move through the air to create lift. This job belongs to the engines. Whether they are roaring jet engines or spinning propellers, their function is the same. To move a large amount of air backwards, which, according to the laws of physics, pushes the plane forwards. A fun fact about jet engines is that the air entering the front of a modern engine is actually moving slower than the plane itself, while the hot gas blasting out the back can be moving at over 1,000 miles per hour. Finally, we have drag. Drag is the force that tries to slow the airplane down. It's the resistance of the air pushing back against the plane as it moves forward. You feel drag when you try to run against a strong wind. Engineers work very hard to make airplanes as smooth and streamlined as possible to reduce drag. They want the plane to slip through the air with as little resistance as possible. So, for a plane to fly, thrust must be greater than drag and lift must be greater than weight. It's a constant balancing act performed by the pilot and the plane's design. Long before giant jets crisscrossed the globe, two brothers from Ohio dreamed of flying. Their names were Orville and Wilbur Wright. They owned a bicycle shop, but their real passion was solving the puzzle of flight. They watched birds soar on the wind and studied how they used their wings to steer and stay balanced. They believed that controlling the machine in the air was just as important as getting it off the ground. They spent years building and testing gliders, learning from every single crash and every small success. Their big moment came on a cold, windy day in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. The date was December 17, 1903. They had built a machine called the Wright Flyer, a strange-looking craft made of wood, fabric and wire, with a small engine they had built themselves. The wind was strong that morning, which actually helped them. They needed a good headwind to help generate enough lift to get their heavy machine airborne. They laid a wooden track on the sand to help the flyer get up to speed for takeoff. Orville was the pilot for the first attempt. He lay flat on the lower wing to reduce drag. The engine roared to life, the propellers spun, and the machine began to move down the track. 
his brother Wilbur ran alongside, steadying the wingtip. Then, for a magical moment, it happened. The right flyer lifted off the ground. It wasn't a long flight. In fact, it only lasted for 12 seconds and covered just 120 feet, less than the wingspan of a modern Boeing 747. But in those 12 seconds, everything changed forever. Humanity had officially learned to fly. That day, the Wright brothers made four flights in total. The last one, with Wilbur at the controls, was the most impressive. It lasted for 59 seconds and covered 852 feet. They had proven that powered controlled flight was possible. Their success wasn't just about building an airplane. It was about their patient scientific approach. They were the first to understand the need for three-axis control to control the plane's pitch, roll and yaw. Their breakthrough on that windy Kitty Hawk beach opened the door for every single flight that has happened since. From those first few seconds in the air, aviation has grown into something the Wright brothers could have only dreamed of. Today, flying is one of the safest ways to travel. This might sound surprising, especially when you think about how complex these machines are, but every single part of an airplane and every step of a flight is designed with safety as the top priority. Airplanes have multiple backup systems for all of their important controls. If one system fails, another one is ready to take over immediately. The engines are incredibly reliable and can operate safely even in very difficult conditions. The pilots who fly these amazing machines are highly trained professionals. They spend years learning and practicing before they ever take command of a passenger jet. They train for every possible situation in advanced flight simulators that can recreate anything from a bad storm to an engine problem. This constant training ensures they are always prepared. They work together with air traffic controllers on the ground who act as the sky's traffic police. This huge invisible network keeps thousands of planes safely separated as they fly their routes all around the world. Flying is not just safe, it is also one of the most amazing experiences you can have. It gives us a perspective on our world that was impossible for most of human history. From a window seat at 35,000 feet, you can see the curve of the earth. You can watch cities light up like constellations at night, or see mountain ranges that look like wrinkles on the planet's surface. It connects us in ways that were once unimaginable, allowing us to cross oceans and continents in a matter of hours. It brings families together, enables business, and lets us explore new cultures. So, the next time you buckle your seatbelt on an airplane, remember the incredible journey of aviation. Think of the four forces working in perfect harmony. Think of the Wright brothers and their windy day on the beach. And think of the thousands of people who work together to make your flight safe and smooth. Flying is a testament to human curiosity and our desire to reach for the sky. It is a marvel of science and engineering that continues to make our world feel a little smaller and a lot more wonderful. <laughs>